Margie Worthington podcast all day. All day. Dream by night. <laughs> Don't buy me a drink. Just give me 10 bucks. Yeah, all day. <laughs> Go down to the strip club with your floppy disk and turn it into a hard drive. Yeah, right. You'll get fucking thrown out by Big Tony. <laughs> we're here to name names and make people feel more ashamed for shit that they're not proud of. Don't blow it. Keep it simple. Count your money. No, oh, whatever it is. <laughs> Welcome to episode 52 of the Marky Worthington Comedy Podcast. We're here with the guys from Average Advice. Hello. Howdy. Introduce yourself, boys. I'm Tim. I'm Zar. We're Average Advice. Yep. yep. Is <laughs> that the us. new intro for Average Advice? Oh, look, we're trying to make it a little bit more average. Ours is a yeah, bit that was a bit too moment. over the top Yeah, for they us. can tell that one was recorded for a fucking Procaster. <laughs> um, the different different mic style. Um, <laughs> yeah. It reminds me when I first started, when I when I first started doing, uh, as, as I mentioned um, before on this show, um, mm. I did a metal podcast and some of my original interviews, dude, mm. were recorded on like lav mics like I'm wearing right now. If you're watching on YouTube. Beard. Yeah, you. YouTube edition, you'll see how I've got that pinned in. <laughs> it's like Nat's What I Reckon, where he has the lav mics clipped onto a, a fucking disposable fork, dude. Have you ever seen <laughs> no, that? No. Yeah, he like throws people off because he interviews them with a, with with a, a lav mic on like a, you know, like that forky character from fucking Toy Story that yep. you see? Yeah. yeah. It's literally like one of those a plastic. Spork. Yeah, a spork <laughs> with a fucking lav mic clipped to it. And he's just like, what do you think, champion? <laughs> There's no way you could take it seriously. You'd just be like, well, those lav mics are actually really good. I've seen them in the, like the field and stuff. Like, like, yeah, they're, so th- they're really, really good mics. These one, so this is one of the Rode lav mics because oh, yeah. I try to keep all my shit like on brand. Rode's the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, fucking shout out and hopefully, <laughs> well, um, hopefully I'll get that sponsorship. Yeah, now. give us yeah. the money. <laughs> That's yeah. how it works, right? You boys use Rode too. We'll yeah, we do. Yeah. Do a fucking package. Rode's deal. listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they want us. Yeah. Yeah, well, like I was saying, though, when I first started with my other one, I just bought a bunch of, like, um, I found these, like, lav mics that you could, like, um, daisy chain. So, you Mm. could, uh, like, use um, one microphone input and put, like, multiple on there. Mm -hmm. But, like, the thing is, I'd be interviewing some bands where there'd be like eight members oh <laughs> so by the time you'd get to it just be like yeah. <laughs> just like pure fucking distortion because that would put them all on the one track one too, track right? yeah, as well yeah, so, so if one dude was like super loud mm-hmm. um like the vocalist dude like i've heard the amount of vocalists that i interviewed that would like cut the mic it's like dude you're not doing a death <laughs> you're not metal singing track. right now <laughs> it's, it's a fucking podcast not a death metal track as when, soon as they see a microphone they go crazy when you were saying on our on our episode that like the people like the backup people like the bassist and stuff they're not used to being yeah. spoken to they're like oh he asked me questions question. yeah. yeah what yeah. do i do <laughs> well that's the thing man so like i um I I didn't I did an episode with you guys on average advice, which I believe will be out after this one. It's um, gonna be out for a while. Yeah, um, yeah. I think we're a couple of weeks away still, but yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. I think it's nine so, episodes yeah. away. Yeah, it's a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, we we were chatting about it on that, but sometimes like the first time that like drummers or bass guitarists have ever talked to actual people (laughs) is on a podcast most of the time they just know nothing else but how to fucking play drums play drums (laughs) yeah Yeah. Yeah. and And sweat and and like um and surprisingly a lot of vocalists like the mic range will just be like dude i interviewed a few people where like we did it in like at gigs or whatever and they'd be holding like the mic like down on their lap just talking and i I didn't want it because a lot of them were like big band yeah i didn't want to be like hey fucking such and such from that massive band can you talk into the mic like yeah <laughs> yeah no like we had one of our friends on the podcast um i think before you was it before? i think it was the yeah, the yeah before. before yeah um and he like the, the what we kept to realize that we were doing me and czar had to kept moving the mic in front of his face because like i think naturally when people talk they don't like they don't talk into the mic they just start doing this mm. well he's really tall so he had to ha- his legs like stick into the table so he had to sit back and then he kept like pulling away from the mic yeah, yeah. so he had to keep pushing so yeah mic technique him. is something you learn as learn. you keep doing it and i think it's because we edit it and we know what it sounds like afterwards yeah. we know where the mic needs to be mm. and i think that obviously having the headphones and stuff helps too because yeah. you can hear it you just like talk into the damn mic dude <laughs> like we need people to hear this <laughs> yeah i'm i'm the same with um with like uh editing mine i used to like clip so much out of it and i did like an interview with a fairly big band called Hortopsy from melbourne mm. and they um they did, were really chilled they were really good with the interview everything was good 
but the audio was so rough because really? I just didn't have a good setup. We did yeah. it in like a fucking hotel room out the back of a gig mm. and I just got 15 minutes with them mm. and I was... I think there was like six bands on the bill and I interviewed every one of them. Wow, okay. And yeah, we just booked a hotel room and fucking sat in there, me and my co-host at the time, and just ran through like 15 minutes with each band for like yeah, two, two and a half hours straight. Um, but yeah, that was good. Um, you were saying before about like, um, we we're talking about your, your show as mm. well. Um, this is a little bit more of like a, um, just talk shit podcast but you yeah. guys actually have like a like a show like agenda well yeah i suppose yeah. um i i don't know because it's like it's all been pretty like learn as we go it's all just figuring out what works for us well we're thinking of, of season two going to more sort of talk you know, casual yeah. conversations mm. um we kind of wanted to have an idea that would catch on um but then we found it it was hard to kind of stick with that mm -hmm. and we thought maybe season two will kind of away from it kind of just go a bit more casual yep. yeah because yeah. like i think we were scared that we weren't going to be able to talk for an hour each yeah. episode so that's where we came up with like the topic idea and we have like a different theme each episode but then we realized it's really hard to continue coming up with themes after 30 and episodes. there's only so much advice you can give <laughs> yeah, yeah. and you're yeah. like <laughs> and eventually average. become yeah, super exactly. average yes yeah, so then we start getting like super niche average advice. well that's it because we did a we did an episode on comedy yeah and you know Tim does a bit of comedy. I've never done did, comedy. Did did a bit of comedy, but then we brought you on. We're like, oh, it's Soon good to return to. Yeah, <laughs> but we brought you on. We're like, oh, you've actually done comedy. You do comedy. Yeah. You know, you have a bit more experience with it. So it would be good to have advice from someone that's a bit more than average. Yeah, so, I think when we started branching out and bringing more guests in, um, yeah. it sort of re reinvigorated the the idea of what we're doing because. We, instead of us just talking shit on talking about our experiences, we can just t more turn into interviewers and just start mm. asking questions about them. And like, because then it's new for us too. Like we haven't heard any of these stories. Yeah. You know, we've been friends for like 11 years. We've heard every fucking story we could think of. Yeah. Like having you on, having our other mate on when they're telling stories, it's exciting for us because we've never heard them before. We're mm. like, oh, sweet. And you get a bit because we just repeat stories we've told each other a million times. Yeah, and you because so. you um you do it a bit different. Like we when we started doing because I've wanted to do a podcast for ages. Yeah, but I didn't understand how to do one like solo. Like I was like I would love to be able to figure out a way to just do a podcast solo. Like obviously I love user, yeah. but this oh, is the so, early, early early stages. That's not fucking obvious at this point. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Early <laughs> stages um, when I didn't think Zara was keen. I was trying to figure out how to do it, and I was like it's so hard to just sit here and talk by yourself. Yeah. So it's really interesting, obviously the way you do it, but I also didn't want to have to rely on getting guests every episode because yeah. I, because I knew I wanted to do one a week and trying to figure out to get four guests a month would just be a nightmare. It's It, it would be insane. Yeah. Too. It'd be a nightmare. So when Zar said he was keen, I was like, well, we've already got the relationship and the rapport. I yeah. think we would be able to do this pretty well. And the feedback so far has been great. So like, yeah, yeah. We'll definitely keep it going. Yeah, well, you guys, uh, we're put. I'm putting out this episode before our episode, mm -hmm. so yeah. um, so we're kind of getting like a snapshot in like your you're up to you're still in season one. Season one, point. yeah. So yeah. we've still done we did episode it. 25, today. 25. Yeah, so but you just released like fifteen or something. Or? Fifteen, yeah. yeah. So we're a couple of weeks in advance. Fucking yeah, look, I actually remember. Yeah. I remember your episode numbers. You remember better than us. Yeah. You see the bit the the uh, listeners and viewers on for the sick cunts on YouTube right now. Um, hit that fucking bell. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, for those people. You don't realize behind the scenes, I come in and I'm just like, hey, welcome to episode 52. What you don't see is where I'm scrolling through my like, own fuck, podcast what are we up to? <laughs> to see what I'm up to. Because, of course, I subscribe to my own podcast with my uh, other email address. We, we were surprised today because we were like, no, we're not up to 25, are we? No. Yeah, like, oh, 23. We, I, had to oh, go back, I had to go back to all three episodes. I'm like, fuck, what is 25? Because <laughs> yeah. like, you don't realize like it's we have 25 hours of just us talking. It's just it's just it's kind of surreal mm. and mind blowing that um, you just have that. And like eventually all of that's going to be out in the air. And I've, I try not to do this, but I, I do check the downloads and stuff and just seeing mm. how well something's doing. And like because um, it always spikes when we when we release on Thursdays. Episode on Thursdays. Yeah. Um, but then it's sort of just we have like seven a day after that, and it's really it's cool to it's cool to see sort of thing. See it go, yeah, yeah. dude. I um so I got hit up by a sponsor. I won't say who it is because they Ooh. can pay me if I'm going to mention their name yeah. on the show. But um, 
they had like requirements and I was under the limit. Yep. Um, but it was good because it like I like set because I'm a goal guy, right? Mm-hmm. Same. Um, because I listened to your episode about goals and yeah. like, nice. Fucking, nice. now I'm now I'm Gucci. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I um have like for my podcast I've got like because as much as it seems like I'm a degenerate cunt, um, <laughs> I actually have like I'm fairly like goal orientated and business minded mm-hmm. I think you need to be in comedy too dude you need to be in life yeah it's yeah. true kind of went to fucking 7-Eleven down the road the other day mm. and they charged me for the wrong pump the difference was $2 don't think I didn't come home and send them a fucking email and be like you charged me for the wrong amount yeah dude, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm, savvy dude, dude I'm not a fucking stingy cunt I'm a process cunt yeah this is like it's the if, principle yeah it's just like I, I'll send that email and if they ask for more information I'm not going to reply. I just wanted to initiate the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I just want them to know that the dude that has four jobs is starting to fuck up yeah. and charge people for the wrong amount of fuel. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'm I'm just like, dude, I... um, It's about, like, not just in business, but personally, it's about administration. I call it mm. personal administration, right? Like, Life I've, admin. Yeah, I've got fucking, like folders for bills that i need to pay i've, I've got automatic payment methods in my accounts mm. um i set stuff to like be paid the day before it's due yeah um, or two days before it's due so it's in the account but while i'm not fucking um while i'm while i haven't paid that money it goes into a high interest savings account um nice. so that i earn interest on money that i'm gonna pay anyway yeah i'm no. like why would i pay it on the due date so that they can like i don't earn interest on that yeah i worked out over the course of the year it's only a couple of bucks difference worth of interest but for no difference in work and it's all automated yeah like it's going to come out of my account automatically anyway i i i I used to have a lot of automatic payments. Yeah. Um, but then I feel like I, I start freaking out because I'm just like, I don't know if I've paid this. I don't know. Mm. So I've changed. I only have one thing that's automatic now. That's my insurance for my car. Yeah. Everything else I have to do manually, which means I can do the same thing where it's something that I know I have to sit down like once a month or whatever and just sit down and pay the bills that I have to pay. Yeah. And it's weird because I get paid weekly now. Yeah. So it's weird. So some weeks I don't have to pay any bills and then the next week I'll have to pay, like I'll have three bills at a June and I'll pay them all that week. So yeah. it's really weird how I manage my money nowadays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, back to what you're saying about the podcast um, layout, you know, to, to mm-hmm. um, with, but that's a really good setup um, from yeah. my experience because like luckily i'm only twice a month so i yeah. can i can organize comedians or guests mm-hmm. um like I, I don't i yeah. don't just have comedians. yeah yeah but uh, but i also i don't um i i have the luxury of like being in the comedy scene i know a bunch of people yeah. with a fucking the like that the, want the, the following the yeah. need of people to listen to them talk yeah. <laughs> no matter how, the weirdest thing about doing comedy is you want everyone to hear you but you need to act like you don't want people to hear okay, you okay yeah but the thing is like anyone that goes out and they're just like oh man I'm a piece of shit blah 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 dude you signed up for an open mic and you turned up don't tell me you haven't got a fucking like ability you You haven't got the want to be heard yeah Yeah. you 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 definitely need to want the stage like the spotlight if you want to be comedy tim and i always you would never get up tim and i always say this in a podcast like we love hearing ourselves talk and (laughs) we love hearing ourselves on the recording yeah and so this is a perfect thing for us to do because we just love to talk and we want people to hear us but you know you can't act like you want that well i I feel like the you get better at conversations too when you're doing yeah. stuff like this. Like yeah. me, me and you, it's just like you can create an engaging conversation um, pretty easily if you are comfortable with the person you're talking to. And I think that's the difference between interviewing and co-host talking because yeah. you are comfortable with your co-host. You're comfortable with sort of trying new things. Well, with an interview, sorry, just one. Oh, second. sorry. With an interview, Fucking Zaz been trying. To <laughs> <say> yeah, <laughs> with an interview, he um, <laughs> you you're a little bit more on edge because you're not really you're trying to impress that person a little bit more. Mm. But anyway, go on, Zaz. Sorry, 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 man. Sorry, just jumping out. I was just like, skin. I thought you were about to stop, Come and then on, you mate. kept going, and I was like, oh, um, what, what was so fucking important? <laughs> <laughs> it was just touching a little bit on um you know the conversational skills you develop there's a few in the early episodes tim and i we listened back to them mm-hmm. and there was a word tim kept saying obviously I say and i kept saying essentially or something yeah. and i noticed i was saying like a lot mm-hmm. in yeah. my sentences like filler words and yeah. i realized in the later episodes i've stopped doing that mm-hmm. and 
I didn't realize that I did that in conversation. So it was really good to listen back and actually realize things that you didn't like about how you talked. Yeah. And you could actually correct that. And it was more subconscious than anything. I just picked up on it and I go, oh. Yeah, I hated it because yeah. I was editing it and like I would put in obviously in the most stupid places mm. where <laughs> it's just like you could tell that it did. I didn't want to say the word, but I just didn't know what else you to would say. You would say obviously when it wasn't obvious. Yeah. No, I'm yeah, like, yeah. it's not yeah. obvious though, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say in the stupidest places and um, it, near the sort of the beginning, like the, sort of, uh, maybe around 20, yeah. I would start pulling myself up and I'm like, fuck, I said it again. Yeah. <laughs> So there you go. Soul. If you're fucking listening to this episode, you got five more episodes average advice before he stops saying fucking obvious. Yeah. So just wait Fingers out crossed. for a little bit longer. Fingers crossed. Well, that's the thing, man. Like I was saying before, the reason that your setup is um good is because I need a guest every week. Mm. I'm lucky that I have a pool of people, which I've nearly worked for. I've had a few repeat guests yeah. and that sort of stuff. But right around the time I'm starting to run out of local comedians, I'm starting to tap into, as the last couple episodes have proven, bigger, like, interstate comedians. Mm -hmm. Um, And it just so happened the timing worked out so well. If I did one a week, man, I would be at this point of the podcast of running out of things to talk about about after 12 months. Because this is episode 52. So that's one year worth of episodes. But... I've been doing this now for two and a half. Yeah. So and it's, the longevity, I think, is the people that make it in podcasting. Is like, if you can just stick it through, it's never stop. It's like, never stop. <laughs> well, what what's like Joe Rogan's in the thousands of podcasts to get to where he is. Dude, he like, is crazy. Do you think you've heard an episode from like I don't think I've listened to any Joe Rogan less than episode. 800 yeah no like i I went early on just to see what it was like yeah um on youtube back when it was on youtube just to see what his setup was like the first episode was with tom segura Mm. and they're just sitting on the couch and Mm. the audio is fucking terrible yeah yeah and even he says it in his podcast he's just like when i started this it was just like me talking shit getting yeah getting high just chilling out and um, now it's gotten to the point where it's so big that it can influence elections and it freaks him out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is crazy, yeah. man. Like, just to think that, like, even, like, um, so I was actually talking to someone about this the other day, back to comedy, like, and, like, wanting to be heard. Mm. There's different types of followings. I think I was talking about it on the episode yeah. that I did with you. So here's a teaser. Um, no, I would just say everything that was in the episode and fucking make it. <laughs> just yeah. destroy our episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but uh, I'll just tease it to, so you actually listen to the fucking episode when I put it out. You degenerate cunts. By the way, <laughs> back to how degenerate my fucking audience is. I, dude, you said that people listen to yours when it comes out and it spikes. Yeah. Dude, my spike is four days later. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how. Like, They're my, like, fuck this guy, we'll get around to it. Dude, my audience is consistently slow. Like, I che- of course I check that shit, dude. Yeah. My fucking spikes are like, I put them out usually on like a, a Monday or Tuesday, mm. depending on the release schedule. But it's within the first and third week of the month. Yeah. I try to keep it on the Monday because I've got um, open mic comedy on the third Tuesday of every month. So I try and put it out the, the day before the open mic. Lead it in. So that I can... Um, because at the top of the episode, normally I have Remote. like a, um, hey, come out tomorrow for an open mic. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but it doesn't matter because n- most people listen to it like during the week, like maybe on the Thursday or Friday. Well, or- I think that's the beauty of podcasts is like they can listen to it whenever they want. Mm. Like, and if, yeah. they, if you get them to subscribe, like I, I found a lot of people said that they started listening to it in their cars a lot. Yeah. So, um, they would only do it when they're driving. So it yeah. will spike at random times, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's weird to like, so I've, I've, um. I've pretty much consumed most of my time that I used to listen to music with podcasts. Yeah, same. And I, like, only listen to music um, when I'm, like, um, need to, like, hype up or something. Yeah. You know, if yeah. I'm at the gym or something, which I haven't been in fucking ages, obviously. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but, or if I'm, like, on a long car ride which I haven't done. Mm. I haven't left Canberra in fucking two years. Yeah. Like... I actually... Yeah. I prefer listening to podcasts and long card rides oh, most of the so time, yeah. I, I do it to mix it up. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll like... Sometimes I'll see like there's a specific episode of Joe Rogan or something mm-hmm. that goes for fucking three hours, right? What I'll do is I'll chuck that on for the start of the ride mm-hmm. and say it's a four-hour ride. I'll be like, cool, I'll listen to that and then I'll... um. 
I'll um, chuck on the music for the tail end of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, sometimes you get just you can't hear voices anymore. You just like, shut up. But <laughs> yeah. like for me to listen to a three hour podcast. It, I'd do that in a day, but it would be like half an hour here mm-hmm. or there. Whereas yeah. I know, like, if a lot of those like podcasts, especially Rogan's ones, are like um, not really time sensitive. Like you no. can listen; it's not really uh, you can listen to it at any point. You, stop, yeah. you pause and stop all the time. Like, yeah, it's, it, no one's gonna sit there and listen for five hours straight. Some of their podcasts are so long. Yeah. Like he did one recently with Burt Kreischer. Mm. It was a two parter, so it was so long they had to like just break it up into two, and each of them were like three and a half hours. Jesus. Like it, they just got super drunk. Um, and it's crazy because I'm like, I don't, I have no idea what uh, the fuck would come out of my mouth if we we're on the mic for five hours. Yeah. And it would be scary. We get to the end, <laughs> like, it would be usually scary. most episodes we get to about an hour and we're like, oh, okay, that's a good time to end yeah. it. Cause, Cause I'm like, I think that we could, we, I think we could probably keep going. Like we could easily keep going, but it that's when we start topic, rambling. Think, yeah. But yeah. we would start rambling too yeah. easily. Like, yeah. I think that we need that, that cutoff. Like if we said, oh, we'll just go how, see how this goes. Oh, yeah. Like, it would just get so weird and boring near the end because we would have no idea what we're talking about. Well, I think, um, I keep circling back to this, but like two, so you guys are the consistent, but then you don't need a guest every Yeah, week, don't, no. But it's good if you do, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, whereas I've up. never done a solo podcast, yeah. I've always had a guest. Mm-hmm. Even, um, even when like... I've had like last minute cancellations or whatever. I've always somehow managed to scrounge something. Get someone. Know? And and to be fair, man, like I don't, there's never been an episode where I was just like, that was like a last minute guest. Yeah. They were last minute guests, but they didn't feel like that. Mm. I've Out of all my episodes, dude, I like all of them. Some, some are obviously like milestone yeah. ones, like, you know, having like, like Daniel Muggleton and shit like that is cool. Like Tom Ballard in the, mm. in, in one of them. Um, but like, dude, I, I like having them. You just heard me make that weird noise <laughs> and you're like, I would edit that out. Yeah. I fucking know. You like, yeah. no, I can watch him editing this podcast and it's not even his. Um, well, that's it. Tim does all the editing. I don't do the editing because I don't have the computer. You so. want to edit real life, dude. <laughs> like when someone's talking to you, you just want to fucking like pull it back. Oh, jeez. Jesus Christ. There's a mic there, fucking dude. Fucking lost a tooth, dude. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to be on. That's the camera the now. Audio edition, just go over to YouTube to see what happened. I'll just oh. keep trying to steer fucking... I literally just hit myself in the face with the microphone. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I'm a- the spoilers. Um, <laughs> Tim's thinking about editing that out as well. Uh, it's part of no, the process. Dude, I, I'll leave shit in. Dude. So <laughs> I, I interviewed a band one time and they didn't know that it was video as well. I told them mm. multiple times, but they like they're chilled. They fucking awesome dudes. And I told them at the end, like, so you're cool with it? like, was there anything in the thing that you want me to take out? Any editing? Blah blah blah. They're like, nah, man. Um, so where is it? I was like, oh, so the video will be on YouTube and the audio will be on like Spotify. Yeah, and, podcast pipes. Oh, oh, oh. And they're like, oh, video. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, and then we had, we both had this moment of realization that midway through the interview, the bass guitarist came up because I was interviewing the drummer and just started like humping next to his head, like just while he was talking because he thought it was like audio. So he was just trying to fuck with him. And, and I was just like, what about that bit? And he's just like, that's even better, dude. Like, just don't leave edit it that out. Yeah. 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 No, you want it to be raw and natural. I, I, I interviewed this band one time for radio. And um, this is basically just hyping my other podcast. So thanks for coming and helping me push You're traffic. Welcome. Nah, nah. This is what we do. <laughs> nah, so um, I interviewed this band. This didn't make it into the episode um, because I didn't want my um, co-host to seem like he, like, um, like... <laughs> made a mistake like you know okay. how sometimes it, especially with bands mm-hmm. you want to do a little bit of research 100% right? yeah you need something to talk about so but it was just funny how it happened and I ended up just airing on the side of caution and taking it out but um, I didn't check with my co-host if he wanted to leave it and he was just yeah. like nah man you should have left it in but mm. I will re-release this episode mm. with this bit edited or just this part of the episode but what happens is we're interviewing this fucking band and he's talking about the, the bass guitarist is talking about um, how he um, watched like Anthrax 
in like Brooklyn mm. for like ten dollar entry, like when they wow. were like like at, nothing at yeah. this club called um, Lamours, and they w- were renowned for having like what they would do is they'd have like bands would play there under a different name. So if they were touring and they were doing like a fucking big show, they'd play at Lamours, which is like a small club mm. under a different name. Wow! So people would buy tickets like oh, I've never heard of this band, but I'll fucking go, and they would get there and realize, holy it's shit, this anthrax. is it's fucking like Iron Maiden or Anthrax yeah. or whatever, just <laughs> using a different name. So he's like, yeah, I've seen fucking, um, I've seen Anthrax at Lamours in Brooklyn for ten bucks. Wow! And um. My co-host was just like, because these dudes are like in their 50s. Mm. And um, my co-host just goes, man, have you ever seen um, Led Zeppelin? Mm-hmm. Just out of the blue. And uh, he's just like, Jesus Christ, how old do you think I am? Yeah. <laughs> and we're just like, holy fuck, dude. <laughs> like, it's just such a funny fucking response because he's just like, he's gone from like, yeah, I see. And then he's just like. Jesus Christ. No, I'm not that old, mate. Yeah, yeah. Did, you, did you ever interview any bands and they were just like super dull? Just um, like super like, oh, you're not like this on stage. What the fuck? Yeah, so I... I wouldn't say dull, but I had this really funny moment where like I interviewed... Actually, I'll give them a shout out. There's this band called Christ Dismembered. One of the only bands I've ever known. It's a Christian music, you can tell. That, yeah, <laughs> that, um, black metal, but yeah. They, um, it is question it's just on the wrong yeah it's, it's, on, the other, it's not the, on, other, the other version it's on the on the, on the dark not the wine <laughs> yeah um but they they've got um merchandise they sell wish to sheer sauce <laughs> like, so random yeah the the singer's mum makes it i think yeah that's hilarious one of the band members mum makes it and they've got like yeah i got some it's good on steak but they um <laughs> <laughs> i interviewed because they're like black metal right so i don't know if you've heard any like, yeah I, i've heard you guys talking about um music in the past and you um, i'm getting like maybe like system of a down slip not is as yeah heavy as you, yeah 100 uh, get, disturbed into. Yeah. Uh, yeah. back oh, in the day yeah, yeah. i used to i used to love like um parkway drive um yeah. bring me the horizon i got a little bit into yeah. stuff like fate. that but i don't know bring what, me the I don't, spray as we call I, them. yeah i want to know what um what genre that would be yeah. I, I wasn't really into it was like genre. punk punk well, hardcore yeah to be fair man when i was in high school it was just all metal we didn't yeah. really yeah. have like i'm into specific types of um metal genres like so there's this style called slam and that's where if you've ever heard like like they have a breakdown and then like a bass drop and then they like um, go crazy yeah yeah and so that's called a slam and there's a lot of, there's a lot of like and that's where like moshing and stuff usually yeah. comes from yeah. um i've heard that you don't like moshing but no i didn't say i didn't I, I i didn't mind it when i was younger like i used to do it all the time but at the same time i'm like why are we no, doing you this didn't now? get it you didn't it's yeah. not that you didn't i don't like get it, it. I, don't I liked it, it until i had a head clash with someone yeah. and i was like ow yeah, okay, I, maybe, why are we maybe doing not this? for me. No, I, I was more into the, like the emo, emo punk sort of like escape fades, yeah. red jumpsuit sort of. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I get it, man. Yeah. Emo sort punk. of shit you got to listen to to like bang emo chicks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> You're on it. You know what's up. Yeah, dude, You're in the I, comedy scene. Dude, the amount of fucking bring the uh, bullet for my Valentine. I pretended I liked. And bring to me to the horizon. Try and fucking um like hook up with some scene bitch um but yeah the one scene bitch the one person that likes heavy metal isn't that what you said in our podcast yeah yeah (laughs) no back then in high school it was like well that's now there's only like a couple Uh, but um when i was in high school because we're similar age tim i think i'm like so i'm 28 so i'm just slightly just just one year older than me yeah yeah. he's 28 yeah yeah um so I, um, when I was in high school, because, um, like emo and shit was really popular then, mm-hmm. most, most of the girls were like kind of into the raw yeah. chicks. Yeah, <laughs> I feel yeah. like the scene was, was much bigger when we were in high school. Yeah, I feel like there's cool. a big, big scene for it. And it's kind of got a lot smaller these With days. With all the hair or maybe, and all that stuff. Maybe it's just that age. Yeah. That's a big scene. I don't know. Well, yeah. I, I sort of came into it as... It was evolving. So I remember when, because I grew up in the South Coast, right? Mm. Yeah. So, um, that way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, always know. Compass, the yeah. Compass? <laughs> yeah um, Send the direction. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I remember when there was like just about like a group of three golf kids that used to just sit by himself and listen to Ramstein at lunchtime. <laughs> Ramstein. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, oh man, how cool is that? Because I was into metal, but I didn't like dress in yeah. like, you know, like, like I was going to sacrifice <laughs> a goat. But, um, 
Um, I had a fucking mad emo fringe though. Did you really? Yeah, yeah, Did you have the beard back then? No. Yeah, yeah, I was born with this one. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. It was, it was my, nine months long when I was born. Um, yeah, when I started to learn to walk, man, I kept trimping. Yeah, on. yeah, it, was yeah, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, so I used to be like, oh, that's that's like the cool group of kids. They were like not the cool kids, yeah. but in my mind, they were the cool kids because I was like. They don't give a fuck yeah. that people are going to bully them because they like they're, dress like that. They're accepting to themselves. They're just talking about they this are. today. Yeah. It's crazy how perception That's... is so different with everyone and what they consider cool, you know. It's, well, it's, it's... different now, dude. Like, yeah. Yeah. dude, when I was in high school, and you boys would probably remember as well, fuck, dude, if you were slightly different, people would give you shit. Yeah. yeah. But now... If you're slightly different, they're just like, oh, good on you, man. That's crazy yeah. that you bring this up. We literally spoke yeah, about this like in our last the, episode. Yeah, it's the movement of being different and, and, accepting. and accepting people is, is becoming so big now. Mm. But it's back when we, you know, only 10 years ago, it's like, nah. Nah, if you're different, you're a weirdo. Well, it's like there was, more pr- there was more societal pressure to conform Yeah, where now the societal pressure is to not conform yeah. and to be more unique, which it's, it's really strange how that's happened and the world's gone that way like it's I, I don't understand it sometimes like yes like how did we get here <laughs> back well, in my day yeah, <laughs> yeah the, um you um you get to a point where you're like oh this is um this is what where i'm comfortable like i've worked on a few different styles over my life I, like mm. i said i was just the emo kid i was this i was that i think that right now like just wearing comfy clothes and being like listening to bands and shit that i like yeah yeah without what people just like when someone said to me so like i remember in 2013 was when i first started growing my beard okay yeah so it's like yeah it's coming up on eight years next year's eight years since i started growing my beard and Quick um, math. yeah <laughs> so um dude i just had so many things to reply to that that they all clashed together it's like um like the simpsons reference they had this three stooges thing yeah where they, i had so many things to say and it didn't fit for the didn't, door <laughs> yeah. couldn't say any of them oh when the doctor with mr burns mr. you burns. got all those germs he's just yeah. can't, can't get them through we call it the three stooges syndrome he's got, you've got every disease even like what pregnancy or yeah, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> pregnancy's a disease yeah, yeah. <laughs> you well, see someone that's pregnant long. and you're just like oh fuck she's crippled with that it that sucks man I'm so sorry, <laughs> sorry. One of the you've best, been infected you can get through this <laughs> I used to have this bit about how I got on the bus and there was this pregnant chick that like was just standing next to me like just like <clears throat> waiting like for that, you to get up, yeah. get up and I was just like but like I, I won't like burn the bit but it was basically along the lines of like I didn't want to assume you were pregnant until you told me because like that would be rude yeah, uh, you yeah. can't assume their gender either. Yeah, so yeah. Could be a man. So don't want to, to, uh, you don't want to get up. And she's like, you... oh, I'm just fat. You're like, <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, do you need to sit down? Your feet must hurt. <laughs> that's that's how the joke goes. So thanks. Sorry, man. <laughs> no, 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 just joking. Um, <laughs> it will be now. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Um, you can have that one for go. free. You said you didn't do comedy. Were well, you fucking passively Maybe I should. doing it? Yeah. <laughs> um, no. So I um, have you ever just looked at something? And it took you a second to process and you had to do a double take. All the time. So I was on the bus one time and I was, um, I have a car, but I just needed material. So I, <laughs> Smart. I, you know, at the front, you ever been on an action bus before? Yeah. Yeah. How once hard or is twice. it not to shoot up with those blue lights, dude? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, but the, the disabled spot down the front where the seats were down, I was sitting there and, and across the aisle from yeah, me. In the other ones, yeah. Um, there was a lady that she had the end seat down with a pram. So the, yep. the baby's facing the front and she's like facing sideways holding the pram. Okay. And I'm like opposite them. Just watching them. And the baby's like just sitting there like anyone that's watching YouTube knows the position, but I'll, I'll explain it for the, the stingy cunts that haven't <laughs> gone over <right laughs> He's just holding the, like, there's a bar on the front of the pram, and he's holding it, like, you know, like the like the two-knuckle grip that you see on people doing on the steering wheel when yeah. they've like, got the seat kicked back? Yeah. He's just sitting in there riding along, just like that. How old do you think the baby was? Oh, like, fucking, like, maybe, like, um, eight, nine months. Okay, so not old. You're real young, but yeah. But just holding. Young. You know how babies have that weird yeah, fucking Yeah, they have grip? a huge grip, man. Yeah, right? yeah. Sometimes it hurts it's, your finger. You're like, oh. It's a, apparently it's an evolutionary thing. Like, really? Because babies sometimes, 
they went apparently and without trying to turn this into a Joe Rogan podcast apparently they um have like insane strength when they're born because of like the um the grip strength of um like evolution from primates really? from yeah. holding on to the mum because yeah, the well. mum would be like swinging through it's an trees advantage and shit. to have a strong grip yeah. Yeah. but then but then it like then we don't need it without <laughs> without using it it goes away that's crazy um but there's a a uh, couple of pictures. I might actually fuck it. I'm exp- I'm putting an image here right now when I edit this of the image. But there's this old black and white photo of an old timey scientist that has like a very uh, young baby, like holding itself up under its own weight, like on a chin up bar. Jesus. Yeah. So that's. I think crazy. I've actually seen that. Yeah. 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 And that was to prove that. Hang in there, Katie. I've I've heard <laughs> babies like when they're real young, they can just float, like they can swim or like sort of doggy paddle. Yeah, but then yeah. you lose it. The, yeah. But it's just yeah. like an advantage for them to be able to swim. I mean, well, we need kind of need some advantage because the human babies are weak as fuck. Yeah, dude. That's like right. we're the only animals in the whole animal kingdom where we can't do shit. Yeah, we're so fucking. shit. We're so yeah. shit as a baby. We don't even <laughs> our, our skulls not even fucking formed yet. Yeah. We just have a giant yeah, hole in like our skull. Horses when they're born, they just. Running. Like, like, they're running the second they're born they're like yeah mom yeah exactly yeah dude that's a, we, <laughs> that's, that's a good thing for water birth man that kid can swim straight away yeah, that's yeah. Like good for those creepy fucking water dude fuck, fuck water birth dude it'd be so weird dude it's so weird imagine it's just like soaking in that so juice mm. oh, fucking <laughs> yep um, <laughs> um vomit vomit <laughs> enjoy that <laughs> yeah there you go um so the baby sitting there in the holy shit i remembered where i was um, <laughs> so he's holding it dude and i because i thought that double take was something you did as an adult like mm-hmm. it was dude this fucking kid is just holding it and he like looks over and just sees me like just sitting there across from him try not to laugh just, just looking at him <laughs> and the kid just literally goes <laughs> <laughs> he's like, like is that santa <laughs> yeah he literally would like and, and like uh, yeah so he's literally just rolling and like you could just see him like process it and he's like what the fuck like what is that man <laughs> what is on that guy's face <laughs> yeah, that's so, amazing um that, that, that was pretty wait funny. so the kid's holding his own pram yeah, there's yeah. like a bar in the front. Like, there's like a like a. I think it was. Have you ever seen those prams that like it's also a capsule? So yeah. what mm. they can do is they can fold it back and pull the yeah. thing out and then just walk around holding it. Mm-hmm. Like a baby so for that. sale. Who wants a baby? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it was like one of those, and I think it was like the handle on the capsule was up, so he was just holding it. It's just like yeah. this is my safety blanket. Yeah, mm. yeah, but um. That that's actually just for fucking the sake of it. While I'm putting in images, here's a picture of me with an emo fringe. Oh, yeah. I, hey. yeah, I wish you could that. put that up live. That yeah. from like high school. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's um I think so. I just went to. I'll leave this up while I'm explaining it. The <laughs> I just went to JJ's. I'll explain. JJ's, it you're getting this some skinny jeans. Ooh. Yeah, I'll explain it for the audio listeners. Um, the picture will tell it all, but you, you look at this picture and know I just came from JJ <laughs> and I had a shirt on that had like a pair the, the shirt had a pair of headphones. Like yeah, I know the exact one you're talking about. But yeah. they weren't like straight. They were like on an angle and then they were like all like blurred, like pixelated. Okay. And they had like color on them and the color was like dripping down the shirt, like the, like yeah, the I know. image. Yep. Yeah. So I bought that and a stud belt. Oh, st- the stud yeah. belt, man! Yeah. That's so seen. Yeah, so, uh, with a, with an emo fringe, and I took a took a selfie with. I remember N ninety five Nokia. I remember when I was in school, like I, <laughs> I mean, right now I'm losing all my hair, but like back in the day, I wanted nothing more than just to grow my hair out. Yeah. And I grew it out for so long, and then you know when you you think you when you're in it, you're like, man, yeah, this I love this, this is so good. Yeah. And then you see photos, and you're just like, what the fuck was I actually yeah, thinking about? Yeah, super long hair too. It look, but yours at least looked decent. Like mine looked like an, a bird's my nest. My hair's so straight, it just flopped, yeah. flopped down. Your hair. I remember that. There's one f- photo of you and uh, playing the bass, and you, yeah, I was, was like, like, how are you even able to breathe? It's just like all <laughs> over your face. I was you, like, you play, man. Uh, not anymore. Yeah. I used to play in a band. Um, we, we, we were kind of a little bit like... Um, Give me try- a shout. Oh, I'm not in the band yeah, anymore. A long like, time ago. So fuck them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even... Well, they're, they're, there is a they band... They changed their name uh, now, right? I think three of the members are in a band in Canberra now. They're called Lost Coast. Okay. And no. they're, they're called... 
their genre is post post rock or something like that. Right. It's instrumental, yeah. um, but it's really good. Uh, check out, yeah, Lost Coast. Um, shout out to those boys. Yeah, cool. but uh, yeah, back in the day, we used to be into. We were really into like Parkway Drive and stuff. Mm. So we were trying to be like you know, hardcore, but um, yeah. we weren't funny. quite that hardcore. You were like hardcore people in year ten. <laughs> yeah, like year ten. <laughs> Have you seen uh, Vaverly Underdogs on Netflix? No. So Parkway Drive did like a. Um, a uh, doco on netflix and it was from when they performed in wacken in like 2018 or 19 and um which is like one of the biggest metal festivals in the world it's in germany wacken yeah cool name. yeah it's and so it's a really good doco and it took me back to like because i grew up in the south coast so i've seen them play fucking naruma to like you know a hundred cards and it was in like a like there was like a whole bunch. You know, ever been to a hall and they had all the chairs around the yes. outside because yes. like it's not normally a music venue. It's like where they do like school assemblies. Yeah, and shit, dude. yeah. That's an, I swear that's such an Australian thing. It's like yeah. every hall you go there to always has those those stacks of chairs. Plastic chairs with the fucking metal legs, dude. <laughs> yeah, the ones that like if you swing on them at school, they break they immediately. Break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I was only talking ones. about this um, the other day. Um, I w- and and it's cool to have someone same age because normally I like interview people that are older than me, mm-hmm. um, but uh, and a lot of my mates are like uh, like a lot of my mates are like got kids and shit so like uh, yeah. like I met them when I was twenty one and they were like thirty. Oh wow! Because okay. like, yeah. you know huge cause, gap. Well, the the bar I work at is that age demographic. Yeah. It was anyway, and now the comedy I'm, scene too is yeah, probably all at yeah, different ages. You like you either in your thirties when you finally get enough confidence to do it or it mm. takes you that long to be broken enough to talk about yeah. it. <laughs> but, but um a little bit of both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, mm. or or you're just the, from a big family in Tim's case. Yeah. But um the um was I right about that? Is that like were you like one of four or some shit? One of five. One of five. I'm a baby of five, yeah. yeah. Baby of five. Uh, right. I've got half brothers full sisters yeah right it's okay. a huge family plus then they all start having kids so like all my my brothers have two kids mm. uh so that's four and then my sister just had another kid so whereas yeah. i'm the oldest so the pressure's on me to do it first and i'm like oh fuck an yeah. unlikely fucking combo like yeah. the oldest and the youngest man. yeah well, it's weird because it's like my family my mom kept joking and my grandma kept joking she's like oh when are you gonna get me a grandkid i'm like you're gonna be dead before that happens i'm yeah, sorry yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna happen you want anytime more? soon you want fucking <laughs> more <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna be the fun uncle and then i'm gonna leave you with the kid go my, home. <laughs> my granddad that's so asked, fucking yeah bullshit, my dude. granddad asked me when i was gonna have kids because he wants to be a great granddad yeah and i'm the oldest of his grandchildren mm-hmm. and he's just like it's just like oh yeah First there's no pat. hope with your brother you know your cousins are all <laughs> still like a few years away when you i'm like don't put that pressure on me, man. Yeah. You're like 89, you know, I haven't got long, so like, <laughs> fuck off. <Yeah. laughs> so fuck, fuck off. off. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, uh, they, it's one of those things, man, but like what I was saying before about like the, like same age thing, mm. um, you probably remember like a lot of the, like we were saying before, there wasn't many metal genres mm-hmm. and it was so yeah. crazy to see like, a band that started like just doing and, and by the way side note wasn't long before all of a sudden the mosh pit turned into like people just throwing chairs into yeah, the mosh pit yeah 100% because that's how it works death circles and shit <laughs> yeah so that it was just cool to close up the fucking um Viva Little Underdogs thing it was just so cool to see a band that I've seen play to like a hundred people or they've played Jamison in when it was a thing or the fucking Tugranon Youth Center yeah like back in the day mm-hmm. um, and oh, now damn. they're doing whacking to like fucking thousands like I think there's like I think that there was something crazy there, like a hundred and eighty thousand. That's crazy. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. That would be insane. Yeah, imagine being on stage for that. Fuck it, I'm putting a shout out. Yeah, (laughs) just look up here. Um, I always found it weird the the transition with music, especially in the mainstream stuff. mm. Because I remember back in when we were in high school, yeah, it was mostly bands and stuff that was mainstream. Yeah, I remember like uh, like Good Charlotte was like huge and like Green Day, like it was all at Blink One Eighty Two, like all like that pop punk kind of stuff. All bands. I just want to know what happened to fucking Naughty Charlotte, bro. Naughty, Naughty Charlotte. Charlotte. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it took a second for me to know it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now, and then I sort of started, because then we started getting into more EDM and electronic music and stuff. But that was and a lot later. That was that like was, 20s. Well, yes, yeah, what I'm saying though, but yeah. like, or sort of, it was like early. It was just after we left school, remember? Yeah. Oh, that's right. So, um, so it was around 18. 
And then we were like really into the like the underground like mm. EDM glitch hop and stuff like that like dubstep yeah. when dubstep yeah. was big yeah I remember um, that yeah and then 2012 like when you think yeah when you thought about like the mainstream not there was no electronic music in there at all and then all of a sudden after a year of us listening to like all this dubstep yeah you turn on 104.7 and it was just like every single I song even, had like a, I don't even know what's mainstream now. Like, I don't even... Well, I like, hear artists, I'm like, no idea who that is, and that's apparently yeah. mainstream. I'm like, oh. Okay. Well, the, the phrase mainstream, when they say mainstream media and stuff, you're like, what's mainstream? I had like, a person at work the other day was talking about Kid, L- Kid Leroy at <laughs> work. Kid Leroy? Yeah. I'd never heard of this person before. Apparently, they're huge artists. No clue who like, they are. Yeah, well, literally. I, I've, like, dude, I didn't even know who the fucking... Everyone's talking about this the baby cunt, and I fucking... The fuck's the baby? And I looked it up, and I'm just like, this gun has a massive following. Like, I, I'll hear about a rapper or something, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, like, someone just mentioned it. And I'll look up, and they've got, like, 38 million followers, you know? Like, have you seen Bad Bad Barbie or Bad Baby or whatever her name is? No. Have you... Did you... You know the, the chick that was on um, Dr. Phil? The oh, Catch yeah, Me Out yeah. side is chick? That her? She, she literally, from that, that clip that went viral she created a whole music career she's like a millionaire hey she got she, like, she so did, many followers man she did like one day of only fans and got a million bucks. did she really as soon as she turned 18 she created her own only fans that's funny and did it for one day and got a million dollars yeah there was this one chi- day there's, yeah there's this what chick the that fuck? um there's this chick that's like friends with like you which know, is creepy dude because oh, people just looked at her when she was 13 and said can't wait till she gets yeah it's old gross enough. it's gross <laughs> um like well there's this chick that was friends with like david david dobrik and stuff um her name is corinna and she's a babe and like i think because she already had a following yeah she opened up an only fans and within the first month she made four million dollars holy shit first month Man. and she said literally her first tit pick she said she got a million dollars on it yeah one tit pick and i was like man if i had tits that would one sell for a minute yeah. that'd be great one, be one tit chick, pick so both, both of the tits yeah, yeah. Okay. it could be a hot chick just be able to just do that and just make a million dollars yeah. just like showing a bit of your body yeah i'll do well, it i have no I shame to, to be fair dude like i think it's one of those things where it's like you don't want to take like the easy way out like yeah. it's if I if I like had that kind of clout, I don't think I'd do it, dude. Like yeah. I'd probably just want to be known for like what I was famous for, not it, because I also had an OnlyFans. But it's so much fucking money, it'd be hard to It also like, depends 4 million on million bucks. It also depends like, on what your brand is. Like yeah. if if starting an OnlyFans is on brand to what you've already branded yourself yeah. as, you might as well. Which yeah. she was already like the, the hot chick. She was like she was making money on Twitch because she would just sit in there in a bikini and play games and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So it was already on brand for her. A lot of people it. make their money. They're like, they're like you know the Instagram people. Like mm. they just post pictures and that's how they make their money yeah, so that sort of thing i think would work for something like only fans but <laughs> it's too what's funny man like i've i think i've just got over uh just i just hit like 1200 um on instagram awesome. recently. it's not crazy but it's yeah. like, but it's the good thing is it's like mostly canberra based following mm-hmm. so like so it actually does something because you can lead them places and yeah, stuff, yeah yeah it's it's like um it's like that look i had to like follow back a bunch of like i follow and follow back a bunch Mm -hmm. of people like if i see if someone likes a a photo i'll follow them if someone like if i meet someone at a gig i'll follow yeah that's how i mutual following. so i had to follow so many fucking people just to get that like Mm -hmm. i'm following like seven thousand fucking people yeah i don't think we're following that many people on here we should start because i I think no it's build it organically yeah you don't want to follow them like, because I, I, I swear the people that are, like, if you get heaps of followers, but then you're following, like, triple the amount of people following you. Yeah. What we, what I've noticed we were doing on our Instagram is, you know, just normal people that are liking us, we haven't been following, but if they've got, like, a page that's sort of like a business, like yeah. Olivia, for instance, yeah. she's a photographer, or my mom doing art, we follow those pages yeah. mm-hmm. to sort of support them. But if it's just, you know, one of our mates following, we won't yeah, follow back. Because we don't, I'm like, I don't want to see all your stuff yeah, on this like page. I have my personal account, yeah. which I follow you, but if you've got a business, we'll promote it's it. It's because we, we start, we only got about 100 and, 120 or 130 yeah, on Instagram. Yeah, you got Instagram. 10 times the followers. Of Where so on Facebook, got, we've, we've you yeah, know, amassed about 700 and 750 yeah. followers on that. That's good. Um, that's and that's, good. That, a lot of that is paid ads and stuff though yeah, but yeah. um it's you definitely growing it yeah it. it's definitely growing on the facebook side of things which is cool because then it gives us that place that way we can just promote the yeah. stuff 
Um, and it's just everyone's there in one. Like you can like it or not. Like you're there. You like the page. So we you're actually get want people that don't like our podcast to tell us so we can talk about it in our podcast. But yeah, it hasn't was, happened yet. Well, there was one. We've only had one negative review, and Zar wanted to fight him. <laughs> um, so we posted this one video. It was an audiogram, and some guy just posted like the yawn, yawn emoji. Yawn emoji. That's it. So we he immediately like, screenshotted and sent him. He's like, "Should we kill him? <laughs> so <laughs> like, let's go kill him. Yeah. Should sh- <laughs> should yeah, we fuck him up? <laughs> I've I've had a couple of. Um, I think I've got, I've had a, I had a, um, I've, I've had a couple of like negative comments. Oh really? Um, yeah, but they were like, um, I like, I've, I think I've got a one star on like a one, one star with no oh, comment yeah. that was left. So like, what I coward. don't know why, like whoever had an issue with it, whatever the episode was, um, that set them off. Or that they just maliciously went in. I don't know why you would leave a one star without a thing. An actual and, comment. And yeah. I think that it's because that person didn't want to be identifiable. Yeah. Like, they didn't want to put a name behind or a reason behind their rating. Yeah. Which leads me to believe it was just a f- malicious act. They just wanted to bring you down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which, which says a lot, man. Because if I can invoke that kind of response, I must be doing something fucking right. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, I mean, we've... We've had because I actually forgot we because we barely look at iTunes because one we listen to it on Spotify, um, but we're on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, like all the main ones. Yeah. Um, and when I when I actually go on to iTunes and just look at that, like, there was like <laughs> I went on there the other day and then like, a couple of our friends had just like posted and put all these comments and stuff and we're like oh. And they were all five. There was five like star four, there was like four, five, six, five, five, five star reviews. We're like, Man, I the get fuck? In yeah. iTunes now as well. Yeah. So like three of our friends have just left like the nicest comments, and we're like, well, they didn't tell us about it at all. Yeah. And yeah. They, I'm assuming they're waiting for us to like see it and, and like then, message us. Yeah. And we're, I didn't see it for weeks. Do you <laughs> like, have any fans that like are consistently each week like, yeah, love it, love it, love it? Do you have any like that? We have this one guy in America called Dom. And he has his own podcast. We don't even know this guy, but he's no. like. He's like every every post every we week. do. He's like, yeah, clap, like love heart, like Ooh, love you guys. Flames, fire, fire, so fire. We're like, we're gonna bring this guy on, even if he's in New Jersey. Let's fucking bring him on. Well, I, I interviewed Tim Jacobs on a previous episode, and he's in New Jersey. Yeah, and yeah. um, dude, to be fair, man, if you're gonna do it via video, man, the fucking internet over there is good, dude. How right? did you how did you set it all up to record it and all? Um, I just used my um streaming platform yep. to like um I used my recording stuff I use for my Twitch. Yep. Um and and just um, instead of um, instead of recording the game screen, I changed it to the uh, video call screen. Okay. So it was like my cam and the video call screen instead of my cam and a game screen. Yeah. And just changed the formatting. Um, and then I just ran the audio through, um, like from the browser and my mic to merge them. Was was he? Did he sound like he was on the phone, or did he did he have high quality audio? Also, yeah, well, it's up to what they've got. What on they're their recording, own. yeah. So yeah. Just he, but merge he, him. But he had a good. Um, thing. So if they have a good setup, you just pass over well, the, that's the it. audio. I mean, he does yeah. a podcast. He's going to have some good recordings. Yeah, yeah. Just, we can it, yeah. splice it together. Well, um, if they can record on their end, it makes yeah. it even better. Yeah. But the way I've got it set up is I can do video interviews, and um, some people can just use like if they've got a set of um headphones like you'd use like with a mic mm-hmm. um then that, that that's works. good enough yeah something i forgot to mention before i was getting there but remember it was talking talking about like having guys my age on the show man so we're talking about those shitty fucking chairs they have it like at, <laughs> yeah. at yeah. scout halls yeah. and shit dude um do you remember when there was a time when there wasn't like the class that was for special needs kids and they would just put <laughs> one of those kids in each class. Like, and they yeah, had, like, yeah, that's true. They yeah. had like the, 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 the helper. helper with yeah. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just, instead of having like a dedicated class, yeah. they would just like, ha- you would just have the one kid in the <laughs> class that was just distracting the class like the whole time, dude. Well, there was this one guy at Dixon. He was a legend. Like, um, he was he's so a, nice. He was the mascot, dude. Well, yeah, and everyone's like... super nice to them too. But he would come oh. up to you. He would come up to you and um, you'd ask him a question. You'd be like, what, what day was I born on? And he'd be like, what's your birthday? And you'd tell him your birthday. And he'd be like, Monday. Oh, like shit. he was yeah. like he was a genius Holy man fuck, or <laughs> like you would ask him questions and, like in within 30 seconds he would be like yeah that was tuesday this, this one day kid that knew Holy yeah shit. it's crazy this one kid that knew every single episode of the simpsons you could ask him about a, a quote from the simpsons and he could tell you which episode it was Holy and who, said, who it. said it yeah. yeah it was crazy and like it, because of that like 
he, they were like the best the best friends with everyone. The right man of yeah, he would come up to him and he'd be like, "Hey man, what, I was what day, what day was I born on?" They'd be like, "That was." The Tuesday at 4 p.m. Yeah, and you blah, have blah. a chat with him once. He remembered your name. He remembered yeah. exactly what fuck, you said to him. How the fuck did he know it was 4 p.m.? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I had that party. <laughs> how funny would that be? He just like, fucking... 4.30 at p.m. <laughs> but he's like fucking stimming, dude. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone it's like hacked didn't... into everyone's birth certificates. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's got yeah. the database in his head, dude. Yeah. No, but he would remember like... You, you had one chat with him. He'd remember everything you talked about. Yeah. He'd remember your name. So I remember I met him one time. Then he walked past me. He's like, hey, Zario. I'm like... Mm-hmm. Oh shit! You remember? Dude, he added me on Facebook the other day. Oh, dude! What a and I was just like, and he messaged me. He's like, "Hi, Tim." I'm like, "How do you still remember who I am?" Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, crazy. Fuck yeah! Well, shout out to you, you stalky fuck. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Um, when was I born? <laughs> <laughs> I won't give him any other. Just pull it out. When was I born? There's no. You have to give him your birthday. No, dude. I only know when I was born because I dated one of those chicks that was into gemstones. Oh god. And like, gemstones. Yeah, yeah. yeah you oh. know, you know, like how osteopathy. I thought you meant like um, like uh, star signs. And I was like, oh, gemstones. That's okay. It's that's same. well, they're like crystals. Like when yeah, you're into like, crystals. Yeah. No, yeah. no, it's also star signs as well. This chick mm. was into. It's like I was just. It wasn't just like what's your star sign, but what time of the day and where were you. Like, What's your moon sign? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's you your need, moon sign? You need to know, like, oh, like I'm an Aries. Um, yeah, hey, Aries Pride. Woo, Aries all right, Aries man. podcast. Fuck yeah. Are you in April? Um, no, I'm in March 30th. Oh, oh, it's close enough. Not quite it's as cl- good, but that's right. close to us. Uh, strong Aries, though, right in the fucking middle. Yeah, I'm um, April 3rd, so I'm, like, right next to you. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's actually, um, in, actually, welcome to the Gemstone podcast. So the, um, <laughs> the fucking, um, the level that they'd go to would just be like um i nearly stopped for too long but i picked it up (laughs) the um the level that they would go to like she would want me to be like like to tell like when i was born what day of the week it was all this shit and it was like oh you're an aries but you're actually got these traits from other fucking things as well right it's so crazy and I, i seen a meme that was just like Hey mum, when was I like? What time of the day was I born? And she just replied, "Stay away from that chick." <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen like the Jim Jeffries um, <laughs> quote where he's just like, "See, when I speak to an uh, like a religious person, mm. it's like speaking to a special needs person yeah, at the bar. Say, oh, you end up yeah. just like." Radio, yeah, yeah. and you just start okay. back away. Yeah. At some point, you're just <laughs> yeah. gonna be like, "All right, yeah, okay. no worries, buddy." We, um, so, what I, I think when I speak to the crystal heads, yeah, it's pretty similar to that. We, one of Tim's exes had a had a friend that was Christian, yeah, um, and she was real religious. That she made a comment one time that she didn't believe in gravity. Oh, I forgot about her. She, and we were like, "What do you mean?" She's like, "It's just a theory." And I'm like, "Just pick up a rock and drop it." I'm like. Zaza's a science. So Zaza was at uni doing biology, right? Yeah. And as soon as she said that, I was like, oh no. Was and like, Zaza literally you, was just like, that's the you, dumbest you thing I've ever heard. don't believe <laughs> in grab. What do you mean? Holy fuck. Yeah. That's- he, he literally just picked up a bottle. He's like, theory proven. Yeah. <laughs> dude, that's, a, that's the thing. It's like a bottle drop instead of a mic drop. Yeah. Um, but yeah. dude, I, I was like, I was, I was in one of those situations where it was like, how does that affect anything? Like, yeah. What, yeah. But like, yeah, this chick definitely needed some fucking help. If I'm in hindsight, um, but yeah, and I was not the fucking one. For, <laughs> well, there's for I met a couple of people that didn't believe in evolution, and like that to me, I'm just I'm like, evolution is a scientific fact. It's it's already been proven. What do you mean you don't believe in it? Yeah. You can't not believe in something that's proof. But, but then feel, there was like a quote yeah. that says, it's like, uh, the good thing about science is like it's true if you believe yeah, it or not." Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the the thing was like. Uh, I actually think this was a Jim Jeffries quote, quote as well. He was like, squash quote. So he, he was, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I got Tourette's. I was, oh, I was the special needs kind of uh, class. I didn't even uh, know. That's dude. why. I wondered why You're we like, didn't uh, get uh, any in my class. It was me. <laughs> They'd all, so we had one dude in our class that was like, um, just like ADD as shit. <laughs> And the teacher, Asperger's as fuck, dude, as Jim Jeffrey like, says. Yeah, and like yeah, just couldn't make eye contact. <laughs> yeah. And um, the teacher would literally be just like, "Jamie, get out your book, get out your pen." Like this is how they taught kids back then. They didn't yeah. go, "Oh, you've obviously got a different learning style." We like, will sh- help you like, catch learn. up, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it literally was just like, "What are you doing?" And yeah. the and this dude just like was just like. 
<sighs> all right then and then he'd just like lean back on his chair and then like not do it and like, he'd be like what are you doing but i remember the teacher was like all right we're gonna talk about um health and, and how important it is to you know to be healthy and 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 how and the effects of smoking and all mm-hmm. this shit and the teachers because i reckon that jamie's parents like crackheads dude because <laughs> like he, the teacher just goes oh i'm going to um all right i'm going to um show you the financial implications so we've already talked about the health implications but just as a financial level like for example a standard packet of cigarettes let's say a brand and jamie just goes long beach (laughs) so a packet of long beach 25s and then she and then he just goes like long beach comes out in 30s 40s and 50s yeah and he's just like okay what's another brand and he's just like winfield's coming 25s and then he's like all right so he's like winfield and then he's like do you want to hear all the names sir (laughs) and he's just like no 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 jamie well i think we'll just stick with this one and he just starts going like Horizon, yeah. <laughs> and then we're just like, and he's like, Marlboro, yeah. Peter Stuyvesant, Benson Hedges, and just starts fucking saying all the names. I'm like, how good is it that that can't exist in our class? Man, yeah, the best part of that was just having like that fucking kid. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm, to be fair, I'm, I'm workshopping that because I want to turn that into a bit, like how oh, good yeah. it was to just, because I was kind of like the. Um, I was like him, but like the light version. Like yeah. I have that, but I knew not to like yell out. I would be that cunt that would distract the dude sitting next to me the whole day. Instead Same. of the whole class, I'd make yeah. him fail. So I'd give everyone yeah, a Yeah, exactly. Shot. I heard that in one of your episodes and then you, your teacher sat you next to the kid that was really good in class. Yeah. And then you ended up bringing his grades yeah, I down. I did. Yeah, 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 that's funny. Yeah, so yeah. the teacher actually said to me, um, pulled me aside and was just like, I sat you next. The guy's name was Jack. I sat you next to Jack because I was hoping that his um, like um, work ethic would rub off on you. Yeah, bring your grades up. And but yeah, you've actually um, brought him down. Because <laughs> <laughs> my life is more fun. Was than he his. one of those kids that like didn't want to talk in class? He was no, like, don't, don't, don't talk to me. He started off like that, dude. Yeah. And because of my undying need for attention, <laughs> I broke him. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love back in high school, like walking around and just calling the teachers by their first name, because they used to get real mad. That was mad inside information. They used to get dude. real you mad. Could work yeah. out what their first name was, dude. There was, like, this, there was this one guy named Bob Lefebvre. Do you remember Mr. Lefebvre? I do. Yes. He was the one teacher that got so angry at us. And me and me and our mate David at the time was um we were just in his like like SOS class, whatever the fuck it's called. Yes. Yeah, um, so and then we were just like, hey Bob. He's just like, no. We're like, oh, sorry, Bob. And then he got so mad, he kicked us out. And then when we saw him on the playground, we are like, hey, Bob. And he's just like, no. Yeah. We had a fucking teacher. We used to call him Lightning Tower. Because, Lightning Tower? Yeah, because how he did playground duty, he would stand in the middle of the oval and just point. <laughs> like if someone was doing the wrong thing, he'd be like, no running. He, his name was Mr. Adams. And he used to dress in like a full, like old school, like suit. Okay, with like tweed, tweed, the yeah. tweed things, dude. He had like a hat, yeah, and he'd roll his R's. So like, <laughs> if you were like, if you like littered, like if someone walked past and dropped rubbish, he'd be like rubbish in the bin. Like that's mm. how he'd say it. And um, yeah, he's just a fucking like. He was really smart, like, mm. but he was just really weird and old school. Yeah, set in his ways. And um, yeah, we used to call him Lightning mm. Tower, dude. And I remember one time um, he was walking across the basketball court like during the changeover of teachers. Mm. So he's like walking like under the basketball hoop, and he just didn't stop. He just was just like, "I'm walking. Too bad." Mm. And my buddy goes for a shot as as. He's walking, and he had like those the creepy old timey hat, like fucking um. Like what I'm wearing? No, no, not the, <laughs> not, not 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 the not the fucking Doctor Harry the flat cat, cat killer. The flat yeah. cat, yeah, the other old cat killer. But um, <laughs> that's what I call him, dude, because the Doctor Harry. Like, I remember Doctor Harry. Did he kill cats? What? No, I just say that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he, he actually kept a lot of them alive. Um, but <laughs> who doesn't like some good defamation in the morning? You know. Dude, this isn't fucking community radio. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is fucking underground podcast. So, um, no, nah, Dr. Harry, Dr. Harry didn't, re- actually, he's the cockatoo killer, dude, because my cousin had a pet cockatoo who was sick and he sent him a letter 
and he didn't reply. And now my cousin blames Dr. Harry for his death. Do you know there's other vets that he could have taken him? <laughs> no, but they're not Dr. Harry, dude. <laughs> it's like, that's like sending a letter to, um, the, like, what, the Bondi vet? Chris, Chris, yeah. whatever he's like. He's yeah. like, hey, man, my, my, my dog is just sick. No, no <laughs> that's the reason that he went to him because he'd been to so many vets and they couldn't really? fix it. So okay. as a last ditched effort, they went to Dr. Harry. Well, I feel like a dick now. Yeah. Uh, anyway, man, it's only if I, it's only his little childhood cockatoo. But yeah, anyway, um, yeah. So yeah, Doctor Harry, he did rock up, but he just broke his neck and went off. Mm. That one didn't make it into the show. <laughs> oh, God. Not, not really. Um, fuck that. Take that, you defamation cunts. Doctor Harry's lawyers, if you're listening, fucking there you go. Make sure you listen to the whole episode, man. They thought they had gold. Dude, like and subscribe. Comment down below. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway. Um, no, so he's walking under the basketball hoop, dude, and this and my buddy Tate, Filipino dude, fucking throws the ball, and it just goes through the hoop, and straight just boom, straight on top of the hat. It's like one of those like ones that it's like made out of like, like a, material, yeah, um, and it just fucking like went down on like and pushed it onto his head. That's hilarious. And I was just like, that is so fucking funny. And even Mister Adams realized how funny that was. Like he like. <laughs> He just was just like, he like turns around, smirks and walks off because like he just realized how funny it is that someone just like, because he just was, walk, he, he was like this staunch cunt that was like, yeah. I'm walking. But I dated yeah. this girl that told me she had a woodwork teacher. I don't know if you've heard this name, Mr. Carson. Apparently, no. yeah, okay. I don't know what school it was. Apparently this cunt had, was like this lumberjack looking big woodwork teacher. Mm. And he had this like little pink two door car. <laughs> And people would just be like, oh, is that your daughter's car or something? And he'd be like, no, it's mine. He was just staunch. Remember we were saying it earlier in the episode about perception? Yeah. He was just what about it, so mate? fucking confident within himself that he's just like, it's cheap on fuel. Yeah. Like, like uh, who gives there was, a fuck? There was this one teacher back in out when we went to school at Campbell. And this is a, such a funny fucking story. So one of our um, mates, Lawton, mm. he, uh, w- we had another friend that named Blake. And Blake asked to borrow Lawton's headphones. And we're in woodshop woodwork class and we're doing watching this demonstration. So Blake's just like has one of you know, it comes up through the shirt sure. and then you up into it. And just listen, yeah, it's just listening to music through okay. the class. Um and the teacher's name was uh was Crazy Craven. Gravy, yeah, Crazy Gravy. Mr. Craven, they, we <laughs> called him yeah, Crazy Gravy. Crazy Gravy because he gravy. used to snap at people all the time and he was just he was such a sexist douche too. So like he used to do there was this girl in my class and she he used to just do all of her work in electronics. Just would complete all of her work. And she, he thought she was in Yeah, no, because she he thought he was she was hot and he would get flirting with her. That's and not then, sexist, dude. Um, well, then when he would, I went up and he would be like, "This is shit," and then he would oh, go he and make sexist me sexist towards men. Yeah, oh, that's what I'm saying. Think, yeah, like, I'm not like, used to it being that. Yeah, way yeah. So he was just like real, real. He gave them a leg up because he would just do all their work for them. Dude, how and creepy is it? That super that dude creepy. Was in school? Anyway, yeah, super creepy. Anyway, that's why we called him Crazy Gravy. Um, anyway, <laughs> so we're Funny in this class, and then like. Crazy Gravy screams at Blake. He's like, take your thing out and takes it out. And then as soon as he turns around, puts it back in. Mm. And then like, they're just having a conversation and Gra- Graven just grabs it, pulls it out of his thing and just immediately buzz saws it in half. Oh. <laughs> he just, just grabs it and, and, and gives it back. He's just like, those were Sam's. <laughs> <laughs> and there used to be a quote whenever he'd do something like that. They're just like, Gravy, why are you being so crazy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah crazy yeah. gravy. <laughs> he would fucking, you'd see steam coming out of his eyes. Because oh. we would say it behind his back, but then there was a few people that were game enough to just yeah. call him crazy gravy to his face, and he would go fucking ape He's shit. Dude, I hope you hear this, Craven. You're crazy. <laughs> Dude, imagine being a teacher and knowing you had a nickname amongst the students. Especially a bad nickname. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we, um, we had a few teachers that were like that. I, we, one of our English teachers was like it was he was like a, a chubby dude with grey hair. Yeah. Short chubby guy with grey hair. And we used to call him Mr. Wiggum. Like his police <laughs> yeah. chief. Wiggum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. And um my um uh, we used to have do construction at school. It was basically where they put all the dumb kids. Um <laughs> yep. no Makes actually sense. they didn't put them that there. That was auto maintenance dude. They didn't put them there. They just like the dumb kids were attracted they just to went it. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're just like, Yeah man, I'll dig a hole instead of fucking advanced math. Yeah. Um <laughs> So I was in the construction class <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, 
we, we were building a set of fucking concrete stairs to go up onto like the bus shelter. Okay. Yeah, they would literally just make us do construction. That's just like childhood labor yeah, laws. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, Shut your mouth up, dude. So we, we were sitting there um, and the English teacher, Mr. Wiggum, and fucking um, the construction teacher had like banter. Yeah. Like they obviously were like, they weren't really mates, but they would just, like, give each other shit. I think it was, like, a whole, like, oh, look at you, you're fucking, like, doing your English, I like... committed to calling me. Yeah. Sorry. It's just, like, um... Ezra, I will rap soon. Yeah. Um, so... It was... I think it was kind of, like, a... You know how there's this, like, tradie versus public service yep. fucking beef? Like, mm. where the tradies is like, fucking criminal how much those fucking blokes get yeah. paid to do fuck all. It was like that, but within the school. Like, the construction teacher versus the English teacher. Was I can like, see that. Like, just like, oh, what do you fucking get paid just to teach kids how to dig holes? Or like, what well, do you get paid just to fucking sit there and tell them to read fucking novels? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um... We're digging this fucking trench for this for the footings for a fucking concrete um, foundation, and um, Mr. Wiggum sticks his head out the fucking window of the staff room. Just goes like, "You got him, Mr. Gray. You're teaching him how to dig a hole, are you, mate?" <laughs> yeah. and, um, and Mr. Gray just goes, "Cause he's a fucking actual tradie, but just became a teacher. Yeah. So he literally would just be like." he'd literally just have like a tradey approach to being a teacher so he would just be like be like, all right boys pack that up like or like if we needed a chainsaw f- for cutting like sleepers or something for we built like a retaining wall and shit yeah he like bring in his own from home and just be like <laughs> yeah. fucking steal mate yeah yeah, yeah. He'd like, like we'd rave him up we'd be like oh fuck did you just sharpen that it's like every sunday mate sharpen her up like he'd be fucking keen i remember one time someone ordered a slab of um wood for like a woodworking project he's making a dining room table and the bloke that dropped it off needed us to come help him pull it because it's iron bark this big slab of iron bark and we helped him bring it down and uh, mr gray helped us fucking bring it down and in the back of his truck was a husvana oh yep and we got down and as we like lowered the thing, one of my buddies, who was the guy that was making the table, just goes, "Oh, Mr. Gray, you know he's got a fucking husky there," and uh, and Mr. Gray's just like trying to stay away from it because he like hype up how good steel is. Yeah. And then um, Mr. Gray just goes like, "Ah, oh, well, man, each to his own." And the dude that dropped the thing off was walking away, and he stops like mid like fucking Thanos, and he just like turns around. He's just like, "Fuck steel." <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gray's just like, oh yeah, well you know, fucking each to his own. He's just like, I've been through fucking four steals, had one husky for twice as long, uh-huh. and then Mr. Gray's just like, yeah, right, well, huh. <laughs> yeah, thanks for I- dropping it off. And then as he's walking off, we're all just laughing. And Mr. Mm-hmm. Gray just like, what happened, sir? Did mm-hmm. you get fucking told off by an actual tradie? <laughs> 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 but yeah, anyway, we had um we had someone similar like that at school at Campbell. In year eight, there was this feud between one of the so's, te- two of the so's teachers. Mm. Um, one of them, one was called Mister McGee, and the other one was Mister Noonan, right? And they were like adjacent; their classrooms were adjacent to each other, right? Yeah. And basically, Mister McGee was like everyone loved this guy. He was such a funny guy. It was a really fun class, and he used to have as a joke. He had this stick, and he used to call it the ugly stick because yeah. he's just like if you talk in his class, he'll beat you with it, and you'll be ugly as fuck. <laughs> That's what he used to say. And he used to put it up on top of the, like the whiteboard. Anyway, someone from Mister Noonan's Year Ten class, mm. like apparently, went in and stole the ugly stick from his house, from his thing. Yep. And they used to say, they used to say like you're not getting it. They used to left a letter there saying you're not getting it back unless you come to the assembly in like a, a baby or like some sort of crappy outfit or whatever. Yeah. And then they started sending the pieces of the stick back to them in boxes. Bit. Yeah. So, oh, and then he's just like, jokes on them. And he just started putting them up uh, on this thing. And then as soon as he got the whole thing back, he taped it all together. Mm. Fuck yeah. um, but as payback, because he knew it was from Mr. Noonan. And Mr. Noonan was like a neat freak. He yeah. His whole classroom had to be perfect. Yeah. So what he did, Mr. McGee got out of class early in the morning to grab every single piece of furniture outside of Mr. Noonan's class and set it up exactly the same way in the gym and then just leave a trail to the gym. Oh, oh it was the funniest oh, fucking thing. Mr. Noonan got so angry. <laughs> He's just like, God damn it. We had two teachers we had that had actual beef. Mm. Um, actual beef. Actual beef, dude. And um, so I'll end on this. Um, basically what happened was one of them was like, he was kind of like a, 
what he would do, it was kind of like a, it was like a study period once a fortnight where he would just, um, help like mostly like the, the you like the, the young kids, like mm. the new to high school kids. I don't know what you guys call it here. But yeah, it was like year seven. Yeah, sevens. Yeah, yeah. So all the Midgets. like, yeah, all the all the year seven kids, it would just show them like timetables, study, like how he would help them with shit like that. It would just like once a fortnight, we'd have this fucking dude that would do that. He was like, a, he was a lad. He mm. was like just a fucking like a young dude, um, typical fucking early two thousands fucking geeky guy, right? <laughs> yep. Um, and the Japanese teacher who was a big white guy, fucking um. And him had beef for whatever reason. And one of the things that the the like helper teacher dude would do is hit, on the first time you had the classes, he'd t- take you on a tour around the school. Mm-hmm. And every time he would end the tour in the teacher's car park because it was like kind of at the high side of the school. So he could like look out over the whole school. And he'd be like, and if anyone wants to fuck with anyone's car, this is the <laughs> Japanese teacher's car. And he would just kick the tire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> he'd just do that every... And we thought it was just a joke, but it turns out they actually had some form of fucking beef, dude. It's hilarious. <laughs> and yeah, we were just laughing about how funny that was. Um, but yeah, it, it, like, it was, it was a, like, yeah, it was, a, it was pretty funny to see, like, the clashes of personalities amongst teachers and knowing that, like, they're all... They're all aware. They're, yeah, yeah, and they're also not, like, when you get older, mm-hmm. you realise that teachers aren't up here. Yeah, yeah, like, I was about to say that. People. It's just, like, they're just, they're, they're, well, they're basically our age now. And yeah. they're, they're probably, you know, every single weekend getting fucked up and going yeah, out and shit. Loose and like, teachers do. Yeah, exactly. We had, we had this one teacher that... You know, had that reputation being kind of like the crazy teacher. The other teachers were kind of aware of it. Um, yeah. So I was in class one time with my so English teacher. No, this was a cooking teacher. Oh, we I did know like that a one. Class yeah. And there was yeah. a fire hydrant there, <laughs> and my mates just holding it up like the the nozzle. Yeah. And I'm just as a joke, I like push it because usually they got the pin in it. You can't yeah. push it, but I just went, huh? Push it down. The pin was, and out. it just goes <laughs> right in the middle of class. And she's like, Dah! like went crazy at us, and we're just like. Oh shit! So we like step outside, and she's like, "That's it! I'm gonna go get like the head of faculty to." Whatever. I love when they used to do that. So she like storms off, and we're just like, "Oh shit! We're in heaps of trouble." She's like, brings the head of faculty. She's like, yeah, "All right, you're gonna be in heaps of trouble," and goes back into the class, and he's just like, "Yeah, look, boys, just pretend that I yelled at you, just so <laughs> it appeases her her desire to be a bitch, yeah, essentially." Yeah, holy shit! Um, but yeah, look, not your fault. Should have been a pin in it. We all good. I was yeah. like, yeah, mad respect. Legend, <laughs> mad yeah. respect. That's a fucking adult response to that, dude. Yeah. I, um, I got in... Oh, well, that, that reminds me of a similar fucking story. So I got in shit because um, there was this chick in our school and she was like poor as shit. Like, she used to <laughs> pay her shit. out, dude. Because, like, so so, she had, like, kids are so mean. Yeah, she had like two <laughs> sisters that were like, one was the year above and the other one was the year below. She was like the middle child. And the teacher hands out the thing. Oh, yeah, can you glue this into your book? Uh, she's like, oh, my sister's got the glue stick today. They had one <laughs> oh glue God. stick, they would fucking, like, have it on different That's Mondays, crazy. Dude. That's crazy. And then, like, the next day, she would glue all the shit from the day before. They shared a glue stick, dude. That's that's some real poor there. Yeah, that's so... Some poor. Um, and people would be like, oh, man, fucking poor, whatever. She was like, canny, right? Like, yeah. From South yeah. Park. <laughs> yeah. And um, so... Can't so, afford a phone. <laughs> someone let off a fart bomb in our class, and um, I walked in, being the fucking ADD wannabe comedian cunt. <laughs> I like walk in. I'm just like, I'm like, Jesus Christ, fucking hell! Like I was saying, it was her. Like yeah. you know, I was just like, fuck. You're it. such a bully, and, Marky. And I was just like, what your fucking sister? Is it your sister's turn to have the soap today? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and she and she fucking went straight to the teacher, and the teacher like drags me out of the class, takes me down to the fucking um, deputy principal's office, and he just, like, I sit in the office, and he just literally, instead of yelling at me like my fucking menopausal teacher did, <laughs> she, like, took out her husband's frustration on me, Yeah. Um, she literally, the deputy principal, he sat there, and he's just like, look, like, this girl cops a lot of, like, shit. Yeah. Um. I know you're just trying to be funny, but just don't like, don't be mean to people. Yeah. Yeah. 
good and advice. I, and I was just like, yeah, good shit, average advice. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and because our school was, our, dude, our school was poorer than her fucking family, <laughs> dude. Because we had a school barbecue, and everyone had to bring in their own food. They wow. supplied the gas bottle and the barbecue, and everyone rocked up with their fucking like sausages snacks and shit, and just w- had to like watch their fucking food, and then like the teacher was just turning it, and what we would take yeah, that's how cheap our school <laughs> that's was. Crazy. That's car on in but, the corner. <laughs> so my that's car. <laughs> my old man is like really careful with like um you know food temp, keeping stuff cold, hygiene, all that stuff, yeah. right? Um, so what he does, he's, he gets like three snags, puts them in like, you remember those lunch boxes with the, with the cool brick in it? Yes. Like in the, yeah. Yeah. So he gives me one of those with the thing, like, so they're all like cold until mm. then. It's not going to get like hot. Like, yeah. That's good. Um, and like three slices of bread already buttered <laughs> and like a Macca's fucking like tomato sauce. Wow. Thing. Like, Hook, I've, I'm all hooked you up, up dude. dude. Yeah. yeah. Fuck Yeah. And fucking the Mac is salt and pepper, dude. And, um, yeah, because I like the movie itself. A little bit of fucking S&P, bro. So, um, <laughs> we, get, we, get, we get to the thing, and she didn't bring anything. Yeah. Right? And, but, like, the... Um, but, yeah, like, she, did, she didn't have anything. She didn't go without lunch. It's all, fucking yeah, days. it's always bad. I remember those days. So, mm. I fucking... Um, I'm like, I don't need three. I'll mm-hmm. just have fucking two. So, I, like, watched mine. And she was like upset yeah it's like everyone's having their food and she's just sitting by a fucking self right so i'm like oi i i got three and i didn't want two you didn't have one mm. and after that well like she she was gucci yeah because yeah. it it she's we, like we didn't oh, care about the and i felt nice. better because i was just like all right i think like i didn't like we just had this thing like well we're good for the fucking the shaming yeah, yeah. but yeah she was like Dude, she got fucking hot, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the way, though. Like, all the like, ones that people give you shit she, for. She added me, like, 10 years later. So, what, that's like, yeah, it would have been about eight years ago I got a friend request from her, dude. Yeah. And, and you're like, like, who's dude, this she chick? she fucking remembered me. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's like, thank you so much for that sausage. With, with that one time. <laughs> <laughs> you saved my life. Yeah, isn't, that, like, isn't that, like, the plot line like, in Hunger that Games? That was the day that changed my life. <laughs> yeah, that was the plot line in Hunger Games, right? It's wow. like, you gave me that bread. <laughs> So yeah, but yeah, was just, yeah. So shout out to that f- poor bitch, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a cruel shout out. <laughs> You're hot, but you're still a poor bitch. Yeah, man, fucking hell. <laughs> you can't really shout her out unless you say the name. Right, she can make an OnlyFans now. She'll be fine. Yeah, yeah probably yeah. four million a month. Yeah. You know? Just yeah. eats fucking snag sangers on OnlyFans naked. <laughs> <laughs> just, I, I gave that. her a weird kink you know how sometimes yeah. kinks come from like some shit that happened when you're a kid yeah, like dude. in super bad where you're just like oh, you know I just draw dicks I just love drawing dicks yeah. <laughs> dictation man. yeah Remember that shit oh, oh, Jonah. Jonah, Jonah, that was yeah. Jonah yeah, yeah Jonah. that was from Summer High Tyra right? Summer High yeah, Tyra that was, that was cool. another big thing I can't believe that got pulled mm. same it with Jamae dude the same as fucking um, Little Britain got pulled That's it was so on stupid yeah it was on um, it was on Stan the whole series Summer High oh Tie has been, it's been like an Australian staple for so long and even all of them and like the way Chris Lilly does his act like it's just so good mm. um, especially when he does Jamae because I'm just like you don't see him as this like 35 year old guy I didn't guy. even realise um, it was the same dude really? Yeah, yeah so I was watched a few episodes and then I was like oh Mr. G and Jamae look really similar <laughs> and then I was like and then <laughs> episode so later funny. I'm like oh jo- Oh, okay. I thought it was three yeah. different people. That's so funny. Yeah, because yeah. I didn't That's know. That's how you know a good actor. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. He's a good actor. Yeah. And the way he just like, I think the way he it's like, like talks to. But just- yeah. yeah. Well, the way he talks to like the, obviously the other actors that are the same age, like the girls that the way they talk to Jermay and stuff. It's just, they're such good actors in that damn yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. Anyway, we'll, we might as well leave it there, mate. No yeah. Worries. Wrap it up with that. Um, we um, appreciate mind. you having I, us. I, you, you have a tight hour. I've got a fucking loose one. So um, yeah. We. I don't. There's. Yeah. It's all. It's. Uh, it goes. Sometimes goes a little over. But fucking, it's been good having you on. Yeah. The show no. And, appreciate you bleeding us out here. And obviously, ours is going to be like released soon. So. Yeah. Yeah. Keep keep an eye out. So you can find these guys called Average Advice. Um, and they're on all of the um, podcasting platforms. All pipes. Or you can find us on Instagram and Facebook. And we'll do a few plugs. 
tag you and stuff when your episode comes out and we'll yeah. do it on that. So, yeah, everyone check out Marky as well. Obviously, you're listening to it. but Yeah, check out this podcast that you're listening. Yeah, yeah. To. Thanks for doing my shout out. So, yeah, can, uh, shout out your channel on your own channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, if you're listening to this, you already know where it is. But no, like, listen to it more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, check them out. Average advice on all the socials and um, you know where I am. If you're listening to this, on um, audio edition, as I've said before, li- go and check out my YouTube. I'm on YouTube at Marky Worthington Comedy, um, and that's the same name for um, Instagram, Facebook, and Marky Comedy for Twitter. I also have a Twitch channel, which is Marky Worthington Gaming. It's a bit like Jim's mowing, Jim's fucking tag <laughs> yeah, and Jim, test. Yeah, Jim's shit. fencing. Jim's Marky, fencing, yeah. Marky yeah. Worthington's fucking tag and test. But um, <laughs> yeah, so ch- check it out on all of the things and i stream games every sunday nights doing oh, yeah. retro shit so yep um thanks everyone for listening and uh, i'll catch you on the next one bye thanks guys bye, bye. don't buy me a drink just name names yeah, some- yeah right big tony you'll get fucking thrown out of the strip club with your floppy disk yeah, all day make people feel shamed for shit all day <laughs> don't blow it into a hard drive yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> keep it simple